Welcome to the Washington Week Extra. I'm Robert Costa. On this chapter of our bookshelf series, I'm joined by my colleague, Bob Woodward, Pulitzer Prize winning associate editor at the Washington Post and the author of nonfiction bestsellers that have captured the modern presidency like no one else. Going back to his first book with Carl Bernstein about Watergate and President Nixon, All the President's Men. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. Nice to be here. Bob, your latest book, Rage, is a deeply, deeply rec reported account. The Trump White House during the pandemic, and it hits on many other critical issues from national security to impeachment to the racial reckoning. Let's begin, though, with your title, Rage. As we discussed in the broadcast, the president, then candidate Trump, was sitting across from us at a table in 2016, and he said he knows he brings out rage in people. We walked away wondering if perhaps he had had some self-awareness about who he is and how people see him. But, Bob, he's also always selling, always casting himself as the A-plus leader, as we talked about in the program, too, the winner. And that tends, at times, to cloud up any conversation or interview with him. So I want to start tonight with your interviews. How did you go about trying to get this president to be candid and truthful about the serious challenges facing him and this nation, knowing he would always try to bring any question back to his sale of all things Trump? Well, uh, first of all, it, it started b before the virus really struck. It, it was uh, in December when I went into the Oval Office and took my tape recorder out and uh, plunked it down on the, uh, the desk and uh, said, this is all for history. I'm going to do a book that comes out before the election. And so I was able to uh, get what he was really thinking. Uh, we did over nine hours of interviews, which you know is extraordinary with anyone but a sitting president over 10 months. And so I could prepare and I would call him or he would call me uh, at unexpected times of the night. And uh, there was a real attempt on my part to uh, just, you know, just recently, I guess a, a day or two ago, he's, he spoke very favorably of our conversations and said he did a, a great job and told everyone uh, what he was thinking and doing. So I wanted to bring him out. And uh, as, as you know, with, with Trump, if you keep coming back and re-ask the question and uh, have some new material to uh, present to him, uh, he, will, he will engage. And he engaged with me in a way you've, you've read through uh, the book and you realize that uh, he, he really, we covered all the areas out there, uh, the politics, uh, the history of it, what he really cared about. And so it's, it's a profile of him, I believe. Bob, you've, you've had time now to reflect in several interviews, but as you sit back on Friday night here and, and look back at the book and the coverage of the book, which part of the book do you believe deserves more attention? What's important that maybe hasn't made a headline? Oh, wow. I mean, there's so many, it turns out there's so many headlines in it. Uh, the, he, he's, he's in the process, and I was quite frankly surprised he was willing to do this. But when I did my first uh, book on him, which he, I didn't talk to him, he wouldn't do it. Uh, it, it you know, it was a, a, a process of drawing him out, and he wanted to talk. He wanted to, uh, and, and it, many, many times he said, uh, well, uh, where's this going to go? Uh, what's, what's happening? <laughs> and uh, I would just press on with the questions, and uh, it is the entry into his mind I believe, as much as you can, because we covered the full range of subjects. Bob, what did you learn about him 
that you didn't know before. He's one of the most famous people in the world. His personality is well known. But when, when you're on the phone with him, does the character, the persona of President Trump fall away a bit? Is he different in those late night calls than he may be sitting behind that resolute desk in the Oval Office? Uh, yes, he he is because he would allow me to keep pressing on uh, questions, uh, and uh, it was uh, it was an opportunity to dig into uh, what he really thought. And of course, you always wonder whether you're getting the real thoughts. But I think I did many many times. Uh, and uh, it, it was a, <laughs> what a time, 10 months, uh, reporting this book, having all these conversations with him, other people, other sources I had, other officials. Uh, it opened up the White House and the Pentagon and the State Department and uh, just in a, in a way that I rarely have had access to. So it's kind of what I guess I would call a total universe portrait of him. And uh, it's, it's jarring. It's um, particularly on the virus issue because the, uh, let me go back to the January uh, 28th meeting in the White House when his national uh, security uh, advisor, uh, O'Brien, uh, laid out directly to him, said, look, this, uh, this coming issue of the virus is, is going to be here. And Matt Pottinger, the deputy, laid out the details. And, and uh, he had contacts in China and was really able to tell the president in a very convincing way uh, that this is coming here. And uh, the president took that in. This was a top secret meeting. Uh, it was not a meeting where the, the, that the doctors attended. And you, uh, the description, it's the first scene in the book. It's the prologue. And it really takes you right at that moment when the president is learning that uh, what's the, the virus that is coming is going to be uh, a, a matter that, uh, as uh, you know, Pottinger told him, said, look, uh, made it very, very clear that the death rate is going to be extremely high. He compared it to the uh, flu pandemic from 1918. Bob, when you think back to that exchange you reported on in January, your February call with President Trump that's gotten so much attention when he acknowledged he knew the virus would be deadly and airborne, you end this week with a book that's shaping the way people are seeing this president just weeks before the election. You've also uh, faced some criticism um, from some critics who have said you should have stepped forward with your reporting sooner. As you digest all of that criticism, what's your response at week's end as you move ahead? Well, uh, first of all, I, I did not uh, know what, uh, he, when he told me uh, early on that uh, this, I mean, he, he just laid it out uh, in in early fre uh, February to me, when, at a time when the, the virus was on no one's mind, uh, in a very clear way, he, uh, he said, uh, this is coming. And uh, I, I didn't know what it meant because the virus was, it, it really didn't exist. There had been no deaths in the country. And uh, so I moved on and tried to figure out uh, exactly what was going on beforehand in, and uh, I chased it down and uh, dis discovered many months later, not until uh, May, that uh, actually he knew all of this 
early on uh, at, at the end of January. So, uh, you know, I, as you know, I have access to editors uh, at the Washington Post where we both work, and I could have gone and said, uh, let's do a story, but I did not see that there was a story because I did not know the full story and, and learned it uh, really only in May. Bob, you've been covering presidents for 50 years. W when you look at President Trump and evaluate him, you, you write at the end of the book, he's the wrong man for the job. But beyond that assessment, Bob, how does he compare to other presidents you've reported on up close? Well, he, he, is, he has got such a large uh, ego. He wanted to, I, I think, influence me in all of this, and I promised I would listen to him. Uh, but uh, he can uh, deny anything, uh, you know, with, without batting his eye. So you, you had to uh, dig into it and explain, uh, you know, what's, what's he really up to? And uh, as we learn in journalism, you, you are a reporter, you're not a psychiatrist. And uh, I wanted to, uh, I learned very early from my old boss, Ben Bradley, the editor of the Washington Post during Watergate, that you just kind of plow on and gather as much information as you can. And Trump, it, it, it's not uh, that he was necessarily in denial. He was so interested in projecting his own version of reality. Uh, and it took me some time, quite frankly, to dig into it and to pull, uh, tell the full story. Where do you think American democracy is, Bob, after sitting in that Oval Office, sitting on those phone calls? Where is this nation if this man you've deeply covered is in the Oval Office and we're now facing a Supreme Court vacancy and an ongoing pandemic? Where is this country at? Well, we're going to have an election. Uh, it's going to be very confusing. It's going to be hard to tell uh, who is is the winner and Trump is... Uh, thrown all kinds of roadblocks. Uh, I, I was just listening uh, the other day to somebody talking um, about uh, Michigan and, and saying, well, under their law, after they have 30 days after the vote this coming November 3rd to uh, turn in their final results. And so you know, what, what is that going to mean? It's going to be, a, a, I think, a level of political and moral chaos that perhaps we have not experienced in this country for decades, if not longer. And what happens to all those tapes, Bob? We appreciated you sharing some of the, the tape tonight on Washington Week. Much appreciated. Nine plus hours. What do you do with all of that? Well, I... I'm, as my publisher of, of um, the book uh, tries to uh, emphasize to me, we are selling a book, not audios. And uh, we are, and only by putting the pieces together in the book can you uh, figure out what's, what's really going on, what Trump is saying, what the other players are doing here. There's a full portrait of people very close to him. Uh, and uh, we, we have, uh, at least for me as a reporter, I look at it, you, you, you never get uh, absolute, you know, tapes on everything and the, whole, the full story, but it's what uh, we used to call the best obtainable version of the truth. I love that phrase, and you and Carl Bernstein have used it for years. And final question, Bob. One part of the book I really thought was compelling, and I deserves more attention, the sections on Rex Tillerson, the former Secretary of State, the section on Dan Coats, the sections on Jim Mattis, all of these top national security officials, administration officials, cabinet members, 
Deep reporting here, Bob, a lot of it on background, without revealing any sourcing, of course. Do you expect some of these figures to speak up like the aide to Vice President Pence did this week and put their names out there on the record in the weeks before the election? Um, I'm not e exactly sure, but I have uh, such authority uh, because I was able to to talk to people and go to them and, as you know, record uh, the interviews. So I've got quite a, an archive of people here, and uh, I, you know, I there there's no uh, wobble in it. Uh, Often there is wobble. You're not actually sure, but I've talked to the people. I had the luxury of time to go back and back, go back uh, to President Trump and ask him questions. Uh, the the whole uh, catalog of those times with him, and w it was um, a very very intense period. And my wife Elsa, whom you know. Uh, was the my partner in all of this uh, and kept prodding me, you know, you've got to go back, chase this down, talk to these people. I would write a draft and hand it to her. And uh, she would then say, oh, uh, bring it back with as many marks on a page as my typewritten script. And uh, it was a little chilling at first, and I realized she is much wiser than I, and uh, she went through the book really six times and kept telling me, you know, make it clear, uh, check this, uh, make sure you run uh, this to the ground as closely as you can, get in there and call so-and-so. Uh, so it, it gave me an opportunity to present as complete a picture as I think is possible. No, she's a terrific reporter in her own right. Have long read Elsa Walsh and, of course, Bob Woodward. And, Bob, you've taught us a lot of lessons over the years, including myself, about get the documents, get the tape, do the basics, do it right. We'll leave it there, Bob. Congratulations on this bestseller. Another one, Rage, by Bob Woodward. Really appreciate your time tonight. Thanks. And thank you all for joining us. We'll leave it there for this latest edition of our Washington Week Extra. You can listen wherever you get your podcasts or watch on our Washington Week website. While you're there, sign up for our weekly newsletter. You'll get a note from me every Friday about what we're going to talk about on the show, who's on, and what matters. I'm Robert Costa. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.